Hey there Elmer Racing fans, time for a quick update on our Rex engine. So as you saw there, our Rex engine has now been on the dyno and uh, yeah, more updates on that shortly. But as you can also see, yeah, we've been busy with all kinds of other stuff also. Our Thor engine, of course, um, yeah, has already uh, won two consecutive World Time Attack challenges. So, so uh, time to sort of diversify a little bit. Uh, yeah, um, about this stuff, it's not directly related to our racing stuff, so we're not going to go into that in detail, but that's going to be on our uh, Elm Tech channel on YouTube, so uh, check that out if you want to. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, back to our Rex engine. So uh, we have been testing that, or uh, our customer has been testing that on their uh, Rallycross car, and we've been uh, helping them out on their, the dyno there, so we basically supplied them uh, with a uh, long block uh, plus intake manifold and uh, some uh, uh, components for the exhaust manifold. So our, yeah, um, what is it, uh, pr prototype like uh, spool valve setup stuff and things like that. So we've been, uh, yeah, helping them figure out how to uh, get all the stuff they want, want to do working on that. And uh, yeah, uh, last dyno was a couple of days ago. Uh, we have uh yeah or or they should i say i was just sort of consulting more more or less there uh but yeah had the uh bypass valve set up uh working there and let's take a quick look at that So very exciting and uh, yeah, nice to uh, have some uh, glowing ex exhaust headers and stuff like that on, on the engine. Always a very good photo opportunities. Uh, but uh, yeah, for uh, turbocharged engines, especially when you have a restrictor plate turbocharged engine uh, with uh, rally cross use, rally use, where you're like off the throttle, on the throttle, uh, you really don't have time to wait for the turbo to spool. And especially with the restrictor engines where you have more losses in the turbo system, uh, you, you're never going to get as uh, good turbo response from a system like that uh, as you will with a non-restricted engine. So uh, anti-lag things are, are important there. And the uh, bypass valve system that, that you just saw uh, tested there, so that's basically a system to bypass uh, air from the intake ducting directly to the exhaust ducting. So bypassing the engine, that's where the bypass valve name comes from. And so this, of course, only works if you have a higher uh, pressure on the intake manifold than in the exhaust manifold, because otherwise when you open the valve, you're just going to get uh, EGR system, and that's not <laughs> very useful for turbo spooling. Uh, so there are limitations to this, and um, so you can't really run it up to like maximum boost pressure, uh, typically on, on uh, restricted engines, because your exhaust uh, pressure is going to be higher than your uh, intake manifold pressure uh, due to the restrictor sucking so much extra power from uh, from or demanding so much extra power from the turbine housing basically that you're going to have to run the turbine at a higher pressure ratio uh, but yeah we have some solutions for that and um, maybe update you guys on that in a future video but yeah this is just a, a sort of short um, thing going through the basics really and uh, yeah so the bypass valve so you allow uh, fresh air well fresh and fresh air but uh, yeah air from the uh, intake side of the engine into the exhaust manifold and then when you're running the uh, engine rich so there's uh, extra unburnt gas uh, coming into the exhaust manifold and then when you have the uh, extra air coming in there uh, if you have the uh, mixture area correct and you have a high enough temperature so that it will auto ignite because you don't have spark plugs in the exhaust manifold of course and uh, yeah then you can get uh, further combustion in the exhaust manifold that will uh, and of course when you're uh, bypassing air th uh, uh, past the uh, engine so to say so you have the air mass going through the engine plus the air mass going through the bypass valve into the exhaust manifold uh, plus heat being generated in the exhaust manifold so that's uh, you can uh, build up much more uh, exhaust pressure and, uh, and exhaust mass flow than uh, only what's going through the engine and this is a sort of really how should I say old fashion sort of kind of simple way to do anti-lag but it has um, some severe limitations also so you can't go up to full power typically on restrictor engines 
And uh, there are some other temperature related issues also at higher load, for instance. So you can't really keep that oh, like the engine at full boost because your exhaust temperatures will go so high that you'll start uh, damaging your exhaust manifold and the uh, turbocharger turbine section also. Uh, but definitely very uh, helpful for, for like really low RPM stuff. And uh, that's what we've been uh, testing also. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, testing the sort of lower RPM range of, of the uh, of when when we can get the uh, engine up on boost <laughs> we actually managed to to uh well not destroy but but uh, break a uh, dyno so that's a first for us let's take a quick look at that also <laughs> <laughs> so yeah of course i mean never ideal to break something but yeah, I mean, the dyno is, of course, up to the uh, dyno place that, that you're renting. And it was a very minor failure, just a belt failure that is relatively easy to change out on the dyno also. So uh, no major major breakage or anything like that. But uh, it's kind of good when, it, when the problem you're having with the engine is that you can make so much power at low RPM that the dyno starts breaking when you're trying, <laughs> when you're trying to uh, dyno it at that RPM. So that's... Uh, well, a problem, but not too bad of a problem, so to say, to have. So that was a uh, kind of funny and uh, definitely a first for us. So, so good stuff. So a lot of you guys have been asking about uh, performance numbers for the Rex engine, and that is with the uh, restrictor plate engine. Uh, it's very, very easy to uh, to uh, max out the flow through the restrictor. So then it's just a question of of what kind of efficiency uh, you can have in the engine. To produce the maximum amount of power from the air you can get in through that restrictor and preliminary results now look very very promising of course i mean absolute numbers mean uh, mean zero because we've been having uh, really uh, cold temperatures here in finland during testing so the power figures are like well not unrealistically high because i mean they're actual power figures of course uh, because the temperature is so much lower than than what you will typically have in rallycross events the power numbers aren't really comparable to anything else and there's like no standard way to compare these types of numbers either i mean for normal aspirated engines and non non restricted engines you have some saa sae uh, standard correction factors that are typically used but they're also a little bit wishy-washy because it depends heavily if you're knock limited or if it's uh, if you're uh, airflow limited and this doesn't really take everything into consideration. So comparing power numbers <laughs> with restrictor engines is really difficult. And I mean, the engine isn't fully mapped either. So yeah, we're not really going to uh, give out exact numbers, unfortunately for you guys. Uh, but uh, yeah, the numbers look, well, the numbers, but I can say that the efficiency looks, looks uh, very promising. So we can run a very good uh, intake manifold to exhaust manifold pressures right up to the uh, to the uh, restrictor sort of uh, limit and we can run a good ignition advance and have a reasonably good compression ratio in the engine also and have a very low sort of blow through also on the engine so we're keeping the air we can get through the restrictor in the engine and not just blowing it out the uh, exhaust where you uh, of course lose that and with these types of engines i mean you're always chasing like if you can get one percent gain from somewhere when you're in the sort of ballpark of around 600 horsepower, if you can gain 1% somewhere or like reduce losses of 1%, that gains you six horsepower. And if you gain six horsepower, you can already start pulling on someone on the straight or something like that. So, so these are, so these are like the uh, kind of things that, that you're trying to chase with this. So, so based on the performance, I think we should be uh, either even with the other best engines or maybe a couple of percent higher well we'll have to see uh how how actual i mean you have to go to actual races and see how it actually goes around the track before you can uh say anything definitive about that but but uh so far it looks really good and uh, yeah the engine is basically tested now on the dyno um we've had surprisingly um almost zero issues we did do a small fine tuning on the uh cooling ducting in or the uh, so the water cooling ducting in the engine and uh, yeah, that helped out a little bit. Uh, that's, yeah, dyno testing is, is really good for that. But um, yeah, engine is available on our shop and it's still in, in uh, sort of very early testing phases. 
but we're expecting probably to go track testing maybe next week on that or i mean the customer does that but but sort of yeah we'll be there uh helping them with with uh, stuff hopefully if, if we can so we'll uh, see how that goes but uh yeah engine is available contact us for that and uh don't forget our thor engine of course also the uh yeah highest uh, oem power to mass ratio circuit racing engine ever made and uh, yeah, our Rex engine seems to have a very, very good uh, performance and and uh, yeah, pretty much uh, out of the sort of, yeah, directly from the drawing board, basically, first try seems to work relatively good so far. Of course, you always expect things to break and some things to go wrong, so we'll have to see when that happens and what, what's going to break on the engine, but so far so good at least, so that's extremely positive. And we're maybe looking into doing something uh, with our engines that is a little bit more demanding but uh, yeah you're going to have to uh, check out our aviation channel maybe for that that is upcoming maybe soon maybe not we'll have to see what happens about that but uh, yeah thanks for watching guys and uh, yeah stay tuned for for more updates on our Rex engine I'm Oscar from Elm Racing and have a nice day